Hey guys, welcome back. What I want to do today is talk about store procedures. So, what are store procedures? Store procedures are a set of SQL statements with an assigned name stored in the database. So, how do you go about creating a store procedure? Well, it's very simple. So, in order to create a store procedure, um, it's pretty much the same way of creating a function. So think about if you were in Java and you wanted to create a function, you would have to add your function name and then inside of that function you would just simply add your implementation. Well, these store procedures here, you implement them this, you know, in a similar way. So the first thing that we have to do would be to go into um, whatever um, relational database management system that we're using and we would type this in create and then procedure and then the actual name of the procedure all right and then as is the word that we're gonna add here and this means that we're gonna be beginning our implementation and then we want a begin and an end and then in between the begin and end we just simply want to add the implementation that we want to add to this particular procedure so that whenever it's called it's going to execute this piece of functionality so it's pretty similar to a method we have our method name and then we have our implementation which is here and it's all and you have to add your implementation in between the begin and the end keywords here alright so when you call a stored procedure this is what you would get. The only thing that you would have to do to call a store procedure would, to, would be to just use the execute keyword, which would execute the procedure that you have previously created. And then when we run this procedure, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get um, all the employees from this table. Because if we look back at our previous slide, this is what we're doing. Select all from employee. So when we execute it, we're going to get all records from the employee table. Sounds simple enough, right? All right, so next thing I want to talk about is using parameters with stored procedures. This is also very simple. All right, so what we have here is a, is a, a questions table. And inside this questions table, we have three, uh, we have three columns, the question ID, category as well as the question so how do you create a store procedure with parameters to create store create store procedure so what I want so what we need to do now is to create a store procedure that takes in a question ID and returns the associated record this is how we would do that so we would do the same thing that we did in one of our previous slides. We would go create procedure and then we would have our procedure name. And just like functions that we create in Java, we have the ability to add parameters right here, this question underscore ID parameter. And from there, you would have to enter in the data type of that particular parameter. Another thing is this at symbol is used whenever you're adding um, or want to pass in a parameter pretty much basically use it just reference now another thing is that we will have the ask and this is pretty sim similar to what we did before we have our beginning and the end and then in between that we would have the implementation so this implementation of this procedure that we're creating is going to go select all from questions where question ID equals at question underscore ID so we're pretty much just going to pull in the record based on the question ID that is passed in and as I said before it's pretty similar it's really similar to just writing a function in Java but it's just done a slightly different way obviously they create procedure and you also have to add this at symbol here and then the name of the actual column that you're going to be taking in you know to um, pass to this implementation of this method down here okay 
So if we were to execute this procedure, this is what we would get. All the columns that we're looking for. So um, you can also, instead of just using execute, like I mentioned before, you can also use this, EXEC, which is a shorthanded way of writing execute. And then from there, you would have you would call your procedure that you've created. Then after that, you would just pass in this parameter here. So this is the parameter that you're passing into this procedure. So what's gonna happen is that when you execute this procedure, you're going to you're going to get whatever record that needs to be returned based on what you pass into this procedure. All right, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now, last thing I want to talk about is how do you call a stored procedure in Java? Do you know how to do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's just get right into the coding. Here is a Java project, and this project is already set up to connect to the database. Um, for those of you who do not know how to connect to the database, I've actually created a video. Um, that shows you how to connect to the database from the ground up. So in order to do that, you'll need your SQL JDBC jar. Um, you'll also need the server. We're, in this particular um, video, we're gonna be connecting to SQL server database management system. So um, another thing that we need is a port number, your username, password, the database that we're going to be connecting to and that database is going to be the exam database that you can see here in SQL Server Management Studio that's what I'm going to be using and then we have this JDBC URL so in order to um, call a procedure or a stored procedure um, from Java this is what you would need to do we have our connection object, but the most important thing is going to be this callable statement that we're going to be using. Um, so what we want to do is go down here in our try, and let me just zoom this in for you guys. All right, so we want to go down here in our try, right? We're already, we already have this con equals driver manager dot get connection, which is going to allow us to connect to the database. So whatever database that we're using, we're going to be connecting to that database all right so the next thing that we need to do is to create ourselves a string and this string is going to be equal to the to um, a string that calls that stored procedure that we created so this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to do this two curly braces and then call. From there, we're going to be using the stored procedure um, that that you saw in my slides related to questions. So I've already created a stored procedure in my database and I, I gave it a name. This is the name of that stored procedure. Question get by ID and then from there what we want to do is add ourselves a question mark now this question mark is going to be the parameter that we're going to be passing in in order to um, in, in order to call this function so whenever you're using this store procedure there's going to be a parameter and we're going to be passing in a parameter so that that um, procedure will will run properly pretty much so um, the next thing I want to do is use this call st right here so we created this thing called a callable statement which is used for calling procedures that you create in that you create in SQL or that you create um, on your on your database all right, so we would go call st equals con dot prepared or prepare call. All right, we're going to be passing in this SQL here. 
So what's going on here is that we're creating this callable statement and we're setting it equal to con dot prepared call. So it's basically saying that okay, we're connected to the database, but we want to make a call to this procedure in that database. Okay. Now when we do that, we then want to type call st dot set int. Alright. So this so what we have here, let me go back, we have a parameter index. So here you can pass in either an integer or you know a, a, a string and to make this clear I'm just gonna pass in a string value and this string value is going to be question ID alright so this question ID is going to be referring to the, the column in the question table called question ID and we're going to be passing a parameter to that so we're gonna pass in the parameter 10 alright <clears throat> hope this is making some sense to you guys so basically what I'm doing is that I'm passing the value 10 to this parameter up here all right and this question ID is going to be the parameter that this value is associated with so what I'm saying is this parameter is going to be the question ID so it's gonna go to question ID 10 and it's going to pass it to this procedure which is then going to return me the record that has a key of 10. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. I'm actually going to show you this in the database really quick. Alright, so we have our question our question table here, right? So we have one through 16 so I passed in 10 and this is what I should get back entertainment and what's your favorite music so I'm simply just as you've seen in my slides let me go back alright so as you can see in my slides let's see I created this procedure here and we have question underscore get by ID I'm passing in the question ID and then from here I'm adding my implementation <clears throat> so once I add the implementation it's going to take in that ID and then once I execute it it's going to return me it should return me this record so I'm going to go back to Java <clears throat> I'll go back to Eclipse and then I'm going to go to the next line after that I would want to set the RS <coughs> which is the result set I want to and I want to set that equal to call st dot execute query so I want to execute this query now this is the query here the call question by ID and then I'm passing in 10 and now I want to execute this so a value has been passed in now I want to execute that procedure that I just that I just put together here so there's a procedure already created we have the value that we want to pass in from here we're passing in the number 10 and then right here this RS which is the result set is going to be set equal well the call statement execute query is going to be assigned to the result set alright so what we want to do next is do a while while RS dot next and you probably don't even need to do this RS dot next because there's only one record but if you're dealing with multiple records that's when you would use it um, but basically I'm just going to return all the records based on this information that um, based on this value that I've passed in so I pass in 10 I should get all the records back so I want to go sys sys out dot print ln and then rs dot get string one so this is going to get me the first column in that question table but it's going to be based on this criteria the question ID would have to be equal to 10 
Now the next thing, RS dot get string. And then the column here is going to be two. And a plus, then RS dot get string. And then this is going to be equal to three. All right. Now, I, what I'm going to do is just add some commas so I can break up each, each piece of this content that's going to be returned. All right, so, all right, so to explain what's happening here, we have this while loop. We probably don't need this while loop. We can just simply return this to make it easier. Um, this is just used for if there are multiple values that are going to be returned. So we could remove this, actually, and we can just have that. So what we're doing here, we're just going to print out the values 1, 2, and 3. So we have three columns within this question table. We're just going to print out the columns for 1, 2, and 3. And then at the end here, we just want to add a um, finally clause and well, finally block. And we just want to go call st.close which is basically used to just close each one of the resources after we after we're done using them um, rs.close and then con.close okay then we just want to save and now what we want to do is actually run this run this but before I run it I have to zoom out of here and I'm gonna enter in my password here so that I'll be allowed to connect to the database and execute these queries so the screen is gonna go black for a minute alright so now I'm going to run getting an error here so I think we actually do need the um, while rs.next right, so now we just want to run this okay so we needed this rs.next to I guess to just check and see whether there is a role that exists and then from there we're just returning this information so as you can see here we have 10 which is the record that we want it to be returned we then have the entertainment and then we have what is your favorite music and if we look back at the database 10 entertainment what's your favorite music and that's how you would go about calling a stored procedure through Java. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you felt like you've learned something here. And don't forget to subscribe. And see you in the next one.